Hello and welcome to Daily Prayer on Friday the 19th of March. My name is the Reverend Paul Lavender. Thank you for joining me today. I trust that wherever you are, you're well. And uh, that uh, the sun is shining on you like it is here in Northampton. It uh, uh, looks like it's going to be a pleasant day today. So I trust that you're able, if you are, to get out and to enjoy uh, the, uh, the dry weather and maybe get some fresh air. A reminder about next Tuesday. Tuesday is the uh, first anniversary of uh, the United Kingdom entering lockdown and also the anniversary of us beginning to broadcast a morning and evening prayer, uh, which later came into uh, daily prayer next uh, six, uh, six months later. So um, next Tuesday, there'll be a return just for the day of morning and evening prayer at nine in the morning and nine at night. And at 12 noon, there'll be a brief service, uh, an act of remembrance as we enter into uh, the uh, commemoration of all that the last year has been. With gratitude to God for leading us through it, recognition of those uh, who have died and praying hopefully for the future for ourselves and for our nation. That'll be 12 noon next Tuesday. You are most welcome to join. Let's bow our heads now, shall we, as together we come together to pray. Psalm 132. O Lord, remember in David's favour all the hardships he endured, how he swore to the Lord and vowed to the mighty one of Jacob, I will not enter my house or get into my bed. I will not give sleep to my eyes or slumber to my eyelids until I find a place for the Lord, a dwelling place for the mighty one of Jacob. We heard of it in Ephrathah, we heard of it in the fields of Jar. Let us go to his dwelling place, let us worship in his footstool. Rise up, O Lord, and go to your resting place, you and the ark of your might. Let your priests be clothed with righteousness, and let your faithful shout for joy. For your servant David's sake, do not turn away the face of your anointed one. The Lord swore to David a sure oath, from which he will not turn back. One of the sons of your body I will set upon your throne. If your sons keep my covenant and my decrees that I shall teach them, their sons also forevermore shall sit on your throne. For the Lord has chosen Zion. He has desired it for his habitation. This is my resting place forever. Here I will reside, for I have desired it. I will abundantly bless its provisions. I will satisfy its poor with bread. Its priests I will clothe with salvation, and its faithful will shout for joy. There I will cause a horn to sprout up for David. I have prepared a lamp for my anointed one. His enemies I will clothe with disgrace, but on him his crown will gleam. Thanks be to God for his word. That psalm speaks of the necessity for David's ancestors uh, to be faithful as they follow and the Lord's commandments and if they will then there will be blessing upon them and for us obedience and faithfulness to the Lord are important as we seek to be his disciples day by day now let's bow our heads in prayer let's pray together loving and gracious God your blessings are countless and your love is never-ending as we bring you our thanksgiving we pray that you will open our hearts to you and to one another that we may share the gift you've given us in loving service to all people. Lord our God, you have done wondrous things on earth. Guide us as we care for and protect the earth. Grant us joy of heart and may peace dwell within us. We pray in your holy name. Creator God, we confess that at times we are sceptics. At times we may doubt that you exist because of the evil that we see in the world. Oppression, marginalisation and plain hate still plague our world. It's hard sometimes to see your love and your light. Sometimes even those who bear your name do not walk in your ways. Help us to see your goodness in this world. Help us to know your love. Fill us with your love and goodness so that we might love one another and lift one another up in faith. May Almighty God forgive us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, give us time to amend our lives and bring us the grace 
and the comfort of the Holy Spirit, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The moment we're reading through the Gospel according to John, and this week we're reading through chapter 6, and today we begin to read at the 52nd verse. Jesus has said, I am the living bread that comes down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Jews then disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate and died, but the one who eats this bread will live forever. He said these things whilst he was teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. Thanks be to God for his word. This image of Jesus being the bread of life and of our need to receive him and to uh, feed on him. This isn't as historically <clears throat> has been thrown at Christians by enemies and persecutors, um, some kind of cannibalism. This isn't about um, solely about receiving uh, the bread and wine whenever we celebrate the Lord's Supper, though uh, there is great symbolism attached there. Uh, that indeed we should be aware of. But partaking of the bread of life is again connected here in believing and accepting and receiving the truth of who Christ is and what he came to do. Because, as he said, the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. So what does it mean if we receive Christ as the bread of life? Well, the first thing we note is that it means that we receive life itself. Indeed, elsewhere, later in the Gospel according to John, we read these words. Jesus says, I have come that you may have life and have it abundantly. Receiving Christ means abundant life, rejoicing in the gifts that Christ brings us. You know, particularly if we go to receive communion. We don't go only with a sombre heart, but we should go with joy because Christ has given his life for us. And so we receive him, we accept him, we believe again that he gave himself for the life of the world. If there's nothing else that gives the world joy, it should be that. But day by day, as we receive the word of God as we pray, as we commune, but more specifically as for the first time we accept the truth of who Christ is, then we are able to rejoice in the life which God brings as a result of the offering of Christ upon the cross to take away our sins. And that life is not only life for now, but secondly, it's eternal life, conquering death and knowing the power of the resurrection. Jesus says, um, if you do this, you'll have eternal life and I will raise them up on the last day. Jesus promises that life with God begins now and extends not just for all time, but through eternity. It is truly life with God. Wherever God is, there is life, there is love. And if we live in God, we live in love and therefore the promise of life through Jesus Christ is that we can know that precious gift. Thirdly, we know satisfaction. 
we know life, eternal life and satisfaction. In verse 55, Jesus says, my flesh is true food. It's not false. It's true. There are many things in the world that offer us satisfaction, that offer us um, passing uh, joys and benefits. But actually, life with Christ is an eternal gift. It's a satisfying gift. It's one that gives us the assurance of Christ being with us. Those who eat my flesh, Jesus says, and drink my blood, abide in me and I in them. To know the presence of God with us day by day is the gift of God when we receive him. It's a life that's full of purpose and meaning. Verse 57 says, just as the living Father sent me and I live because of the Father, so, who, so whoever eats me will live because of me. It gives us purpose and it gives us life. So many people in the world today don't have life, don't have purpose. A life with Christ promises these things to energise our lives forever. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate and they died, but the one who eats this bread will live forever. Incorruptible, unblemished, the gift of God in Jesus for you and for me. Let's confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now let's bring our prayers to the Lord, our intercessions, our concerns for ourselves and for those we know and love. Firstly, we continue to pray this week for Syria, for the devastation that grips that land over the last 10 years since the start of the Civil War. We pray that local churches may continue to be centres of hope and may continue to be beacons of light and life in the midst of the destruction of that country. And we thank God that during the past year, there have been distributions of food, parcels, medicines and Bibles for children. And we pray that God's word would strengthen his children with hope for the future. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those in national and local government. We pray for those who have positions of authority with responsibility for decision making, particularly here in Northamptonshire as over the next couple of weeks uh, there's a transition in local government to the West Northamptonshire District Council. We pray that God would give great wisdom, right judgment and proper commitment to the needs of all by those who will represent us. We pray for governments nationally and continue to pray that they will make good, wise and just and honest decisions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Now we pray for ourselves and for those we know and love in a moment of quiet prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. So may God create in you a clean heart, a transformed heart, a heart that knows and seeks and loves the justice and the mercy of the Lord. May you accept the gift of salvation, 
not your personal possession to be coveted, but his work accomplished in the destruction of sin on the cross of Christ. And may you humble yourself before the Lord, coming before him with a broken spirit, a contrite heart, receiving from his hand great compassion and unfailing love, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you, with those whom you love, with God's people everywhere, today and forevermore. Amen. God bless you today and keep you safe. And until we meet again tomorrow, goodbye and God bless you.